Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay tuned to hear more about all that Skillshare has to offer. Hey guys, Rachel here. Thank you and welcome to another pencil stash video. We are going back to Worlds Within Worlds today by Kirby Rosanes. I love this coloring book. And today we are gonna do this double spread. Now, when I went through kind of the flip through video, which I'll leave a link down below if you guys wanna check it out. Uh, when I went through the flip through, I loved this page. Like something about it just said like Asian market, almost gave me kind of like a Blade Runner kind of vibe where it was like kind of high tech, kind of like make do with what you have. Um, I don't know why I got that vibe. It's just, it's super, super cool. And I'm very excited to color it. And this one is gonna take us a while. So let's get started. All right, so jumping right in, I'm not quite sure what this double spreads color story is going to be yet. So I'm just kind of thinking through like, do I want to make it kind of fantastical or do I want to stick kind of normally? Like, should I do the trees green? Um, you know, do I, do I go a little crazy and do them purple? Um, I think I just kind of want to like treat this like as if it's just kind of normal every day, like usual to have storefronts and shoes so I think I'm going to stay kind of traditional and nice and light and bright so I think that these leaves are super cool um at first I thought it was like rain or snow or something but it's definitely leaves kind of falling from the tree so we'll kind of play that up a little bit and I think I want to do green I think uh I think the the green of the trees you know brown of the trunk I think just to kind of get that out of the way you guys know me I like to start with kind of the pieces where I know what I want to do and then I kind of build from there so I'm gonna do the trees in just kind of the traditional colors you guys have seen me do trees a million times so you're not missing anything All right, two colored trees later and a nail polish change. And I'm actually really sad that I didn't film more of me coloring the trees just because I think that they came out really, really good. I purposely kind of made these like dark areas recede even more. And I did that with like some dark browns, some dark greens, uh, a little bit of my outer space color. And finally with this like really dark kind of cool gray just to push this into the background a little bit. And I think it came out really, really nicely and just kind of gives our tree a little bit more depth here. So now I'm just kind of doing the background because I do want to kind of keep this a little bit traditional. And I've just done a very, very light layer of this cloud blue. And now I'm gonna go in with a couple of other blues and just kind of punch this up. All right, at the 11th hour, of course, I kind of figured out a way that I like it better than kind of what I was doing elsewhere on the page. Of course, you know, it's only over here, but it's all good. As long as you figure it out eventually, it's like life. So what I've been doing is kind of taking this light blue kind of purpley color and I'm just kind of taking it in like a smoky kind of shape. And I'm just staying very horizontal with it instead of kind of going diagonally or in a circular motion. And I'm just sort of going back and forth uh, in a very irregular kind of way. And then I fill in the gaps with this one. And not only do I like the overall effect that I get better this way, uh, but it's also much easier. Yay! Uh, who who would have thought? I swear, I've gone over this like so many times. And sometimes the easiest way is the best way, which makes me happy because this background is enormous. Next up are these high top uh, shoes and I cannot resist coloring them red because when I was a kid, I had red Chuck Taylors. So these are gonna be red. 
So I just started with like a bit of a rough coat of the Carmine Red, and now I'm just going to go in with Permanent Red. And this will be our medium tone, and I'm just going to go in and just create a little bit of a darker version of what we have down before we start building in our shadows. Alright, looks super splotchy right now, and that is actually okay, because I'm just going to go boop. We're already coloring outside the lines. It's all good. Because um, I'm actually just going to go back in and use a little bit of Tuscan Red, I think, just to kind of deepen some of these colors here. All right, now I kind of anticipate that these shoes have, like, seen some action. So I want them to be adorable, but I want them to be a little dirty and a little scuffed. So I am going to use that same just Blick Studio Cool Gray and I'm just going to kind of dirty these up a little bit. All right, so I have an idea around these flowers and something that I used to do when I was a kid, especially on canvas shoes, was I used to draw on them with marker or pen or whatever. So maybe that's what's kind of happening with these flowers. So I wanted something that'll go right over top and I'm kind of debating between like my gold marker, my silver marker. I'm even kind of debating with like my white gel pen, but I think, I know I definitely want to do silver rivets here. So maybe, maybe just for some difference, we'll kind of try the gold and just kind of see how it works. Kind of. <laughs> Can you guys see that? It's not like sitting on top of the color, it's like blending in with the color. And I can still see like the black outline and I do not want that. I might need to bring out my paint markers. Hang on. All right, here are the Chocola markers. These are more like paint markers where these are a little bit thinner, which I think is why we're kind of seeing that black um, ink kind of showing through there. So I, I'm hoping that these will sit right on top. And I have a whole bunch of colors here. I don't have gold, so I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. I always do white, so I'm really kind of trying to get away from that. This one might be interesting. Like, I wonder if this would be gold gold if it, you know, oh, hey, what's this one? might have to try these. These have a six millimeter bullet tip, so I might have to kind of try these. These are those markers that you kind of have to like activate by, you know, pressing real fast on the paper to get the paint kind of moving. So let me, let me see what I can do here. And I'm just going to see how these work. I'm going to shake them up. And eventually you start to kind of see some of that paint coming out. Should we try it on here? I'm a little scared, just in case we go in a different direction. I'm gonna do this, uh, eh, let's do this one. I'm gonna do this more kind of light gold color that we tried first. And let's see if it sits on top of our lines or, <gasps> it does. All right, so this is working much more like a traditional paint marker. I don't really know what I'm going for here. I kind of had the idea and then I didn't really kind of think through like, okay, so, you know, this person has drawn on the shoes, but like, what exactly does that look like? I didn't quite kind of think it through, but I think this will be okay. I always have to think you got to go left to right if you're right handed, otherwise your hand will go right through it and you go on to the next one. I also kind of like the combo of like the red and the gold. This to me very much reminds me of like Japanese market. So that red and gold combo, I'm definitely digging. Now I am going to have to do a second coat, I think, because as this is drying, it does kind of show through and I'm going to have to decide if that's okay or if I'm going to want to do a second coat. Did you guys ever have the Keds, like those canvas shoes that uh, you would draw on as a kid? That was one of my favorite things to do. 
It's a really good I'm bored in school thing to do. All right. Now I'm trying to think through while that dries. I'm trying to think through <clears throat> like my Chuck Taylors were always kind of white. They had a white um, you know, sole, a white toe, white laces, and I'm kind of tempted to do that as well. I also kind of left this kind of edge in white, but I'm kind of not liking that. It's giving me like bowling shoe vibes. So I might go over that real quick with the same reds that I used before, just to kind of bring it back towards like a Chuck Taylor kind of vibe. All right, phew, I colored this and it looks much more Chuck Taylor-ish. Not that there's anything wrong with bowling shoes. Those were also cool when I was a kid, but I really wanted it to just kind of work itself back to that Chuck Taylor look. So now I'm gonna go in and I think I'm gonna pull out like a light gray to just kind of enhance some of the white areas. Cause you can't just leave them. Like you kind of have to, you know, add a little bit of some dinge kind of here on the laces. And then we'll probably do a little bit darker on the sole areas just to kind of punch this up a little bit and not have it be flat and boring. Now, if you look over here, I think that the shoes are the same. They're very much, you know, the same style. The only thing kind of different that I'm seeing is that this has a little bit of a different design up here on the tongue, but the flowers are the same and whatnot. And I kind of want to do it differently just because, I mean, I already did one red. It would be kind of boring to have another red one. So maybe we'll do this one in a different color it's gonna look like bowling shoes, I just know it. Um, but maybe we'll do this one in a different color um, just to mix it up and have a little bit of fun. All right, yeah, just for fun, let's do this other shoe in like a very traditional kind of American blue color. And so I brought out Indanthrone and Denim, but I think for that first kind of light color, I might go back to that sky blue from my Crayola just to add in a little bit of some light areas. All right, shoe is blue and it definitely stands out. Like it definitely kind of is in the same sort of family as this red one. I don't mind the fact that they're different. It's definitely interesting. But I think to unify them, especially because the flowers are on both, I think I'm gonna use the same color. All right, now I do think that our kind of red and blue approach did give us an opportunity to sort of balance the page out and put a little blue over here, maybe a little bit of red over here. So I immediately see uh, this little tiled roof right here. And there's a Japanese grocery store near me that has this beautiful blue tiled roof that they recently um, actually, I think painted black. It, it made me sad because um, it was so cool when it was blue. Um, but I think it'll be fun to just sort of balance the page out a little bit by maybe adding some of uh, each color on each side. And not in a huge way, but just a little bit of a nod. And then we'll add in some blue kind of here and there elsewhere. But uh, just for now, I just wanted to see if that could be um, kind of achieved. So yeah, I think, I think we might just kind of bounce around between both of these, or maybe I'll just color this one and then kind of move over to that one. I don't know yet. All right, I am liking this tone over here. So I think I'm just gonna pause. Actually, you know what? I think I might try to do some red on this side. We did a little bit of blue over here. Now I'm gonna do some red over here. And I think I kind of want to do these shutters. Originally, I kind of wanted to do them in green, but I think red might be kind of cool. And you know, I normally wait till the end to kind of bring out my white Posca and kind of add some embellishments, but I think I should be doing it more along the way just because I feel like I don't, like like by the end, I'm just kind of done and I just want to be done. I want it to be over with. <laughs> and you know, maybe I'm not putting as much care into some of the uh, areas with my white Posca as I should or would normally do. So, I think I'm just going to start to try to do it a little bit more as I go, uh, just so that I'm making sure that I'm putting the detail in that I want. 
I don't know why. I think these are steaks, but at first I kind of thought they were pancakes, like pancakes with like syrup, with like butter pads on them with like syrup in the background. No idea why that's the first thing that came to my head. <laughs> it's like the international shoe house of pancakes. <laughs> I might have to make this a Japanese pancake house instead of a Japanese steakhouse. Just for fun. All right, I think I'm going to bring out my, my cool gray that I used before. This one is super dark. And I think I just want to start doing like some little elements like maybe this screen door in like the dark just because I'm going to be adding a lot more brown and I don't want this to be all brown and I think that this almost black sort of charcoal gray will just kind of differentiate it just a little bit. So weird it doesn't have a frame on this side so I'm kind of tempted to draw one in just to be a bit more extra. Yeah that works. I like it. And I really like how this kind of charcoal gray uh, outline came out on the storm door. So I'm going to bring that up and I think I might do it here on these sort of window frames as well as maybe on the outline portion of the roof just to kind of bring some of this darker element upwards on the page. Black is definitely a bit of a forgotten about color for me when I'm coloring. I, uh, I like black. I wear a lot of black. Um, but coloring wise, I don't know. It just always seems like, you know, there's, there's, there's so many other fun colors to pick from that, uh, maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm missing out on an opportunity to just kind of have it incorporate and, uh, just add, add something a little fun. So the roof there, that looks so cool. I love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, so I have, I have a crazy idea. I don't know if I want to do it. I'm kind of thinking like maybe some of these shapes could be blue or maybe even red. Or I don't know. That might be a little crazy. I, what I think I'm going to do is actually do the entire panel in my light umber. And then go over it and do these little shapes in a darker brown just so it kind of looks more like a wood carving aspect because these shoes are awfully bright and I don't know if I want to get all extra crazy. I just broke my pencil sharpener. I mean it still like works but this lid came off and it has this like little piece back here that like goes into a groove. And so as I was like putting it in there, the whole lid just broke. That sucks. Um, I mean, I guess I'm just going to do it over the garbage can now <laughs> each and every time. Um, but that kind of sucks. <gasps> you know what I just realized too? There's extras in here. There's extra blades right here. How did I not notice that? That's kind of cool. So when these get dull, you can pop these in and replace them. That's kind of cool. All right. Sorry. I think I just manhandled it a little bit too much. All right, so here's my kind of concrete. And I did just a couple of grays, a little bit of brown, and then I blended it with Gamsol. But I'm thinking that it would benefit from maybe some little kind of texture ads with some markers. And I went ahead and I pulled some like cool grays, maybe a little bit of green, a little bit of warm green, just for some variation. So we can make this kind of look like concrete or like pebbles. And I'm not really worried about marker like bleeding through, like I am not coloring this page. I do not have a death wish, not doing this one. And this one's just okay. So I'm not really worried about bleed through. So yeah, I think we'll just kind of pull these and see what we can. I like that. It's like just enough just to give a little bit of a little kind of texture variation, a little bit of a 
visual interest. So I'll do the same over here. All right, I'm gonna jump in here now and just kind of keep going with a lot of these little details. There's just like all these little tiny things left. There's like little tags, there's some roofs and all that sort of thing, but we are pretty much close to being done. So I'm gonna jump in here and finish her out. I think we are done. There are a lot of these like little tiny details here, these signages, signages. <clears throat> There's a lot of little details in here, like a lot of these signs have a lot of kind of text like boxes and stuff on them. And I didn't want to color those to be too much of a hot mess. So I colored just a few things from each, you know, I didn't really go overboard. Um, you know, I just kind of kept it really, really simple, but I am very happy with this. I do have some regret. I wish I would have realized that this was kind of the fish shop and that this was the steak slash pancake house. And I would have done this one in red, the shoe, uh, the actual shoe. I would have done this one in red and this one in blue, and it would have just been like perfectly harmonious. But I didn't do that. I don't know why I didn't realize it. I mean, it's it's pretty dang obvious <laughs> when you look at it. You're like, but it took me at least an hour before I even started realizing it. Once I colored the red shoe and then I started coloring everything else, I was like, oh, uh, well, that was an oversight. <laughs> but I don't think it really matters. In fact, I kind of like the fact that there's like both red and blue on this side and then red and blue on this side, because as a double spread, it kind of works. It kind of balances each other out. And it just gives you a little bit of um, like options to play with. Um, I do like the gold uh, paint marker on the shoes themselves. I think it just kind of unifies them. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It was fun to color. I really liked bringing out my markers to do the little dots on the bottom. That was definitely something that uh, I enjoyed. I'm definitely gonna be doing that more. I don't play with markers enough and it's definitely something that uh, I think is just a fun little element. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that a little bit upcoming in the future, a little playing around with markers. Uh, but yeah, this one is uh, in the can. And I just wanna take an opportunity to thank our sponsor today, Skillshare. If you liked learning from me today, you're going to love learning from all the talented creators on Skillshare's platform. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 28,000 classes in design, art, business, and so much more. So if you want to improve your knowledge on any topic, Skillshare has a class for you. Like this class, SketchUp, the basics of 3D modeling for interior design with Layla A. Now, I'm about to embark on a home office and pencil stash studio redesign, so I'm definitely going to be taking this class to mock up my layout ideas for their maximum potential. Now, Skillshare Premium Membership gives you unlimited access to classes, communities, and workshops that are just right for you and your learning goals. So join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for Pencil Stash viewers. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of premium Skillshare membership. Now beyond those two months, Skillshare is super affordable with an annual subscription being less than $10 per month. And with all the growth potential that these classes offer, that is a fantastic investment for you and your personal development. Act now for this special offer and start learning with Skillshare today. All right, thanks again to Skillshare. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It helps out this channel tremendously. And I'll see you guys very soon in another video. Bye.